Lair of the Mounties. We present episode 33 in Blair of the Mounties. The story told in this episode is a reminiscence of the secret service work in the World War. The name of Matahari, the Red Dancer, had become notorious in history. Her exploits as a secret agent of Germany have been exaggerated out of all semblance to the truth. And while in the story now to be presented, some of the names have been altered, and the story itself reconstructed for dramatic effect, it portrays a strain of human feeling in this famous spy, which, though little known, is authentic. Our opening scene is in the Savoy Hotel, London, where we find Inspector Blair talking to Bruce Harding, crack American reporter on the London Evening Star. Well, well, if it isn't my old friend, Inspector Blair. <laughs> Gosh, I haven't seen you since... Not since three days ago when you tried to chisel a story out of me. <laughs> well, how's the newspaper business? Oh, so-so. Nothing ever happens these days. How's fishing, Inspector? Oh, just fair. Hey, you know, it's funny, Inspector. Old man Pressman disappears in Stony Haven, and yes. you go down there fishing. Yes, quite a coincidence. Yes, uh, sure. Uh, and then there was uh, that burglary at Lord... Uh, Waverton's place mm -hmm. down at Coombe Seaton. The uh, paper shoots me down there. I don't get a thing, but I run into you. Fishing again? Yeah, fishing again. Come on, Inspector, come on. We never got a thing, but there was a strong wind blowing somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, come now, listen, Inspector. Now, all kidding aside, couldn't you just give me the lowdown on that affair, just in confidence? You wouldn't publish it, of course. Publish it? Why, I should say not. Why, no, Inspector. You know me better than that. <laughs> 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 well, uh, say, do you know I'm writing a book on famous spies of history? Yeah, that'll be good. Sure, it'll be good. I'm putting a lot of work into it. Fine, as long as you don't use your imagination too much. Oh, nothing like that, Inspector. Nothing but the truth. But I'm working on Mother Hari's life. Mm. Say, there's a woman for you, the hardest of them all. I wouldn't say that, Harding. Why? What do you know about her, Inspector? I saw her once when she was brought in to Scotland Yard for questioning. I was on intelligence work at the time. You were? Say, yeah. now, there's something. I never got the inside of that story. Personally, I think it was one of the most dramatic things in her career. It was Scotland Yard authorities that turned her back, wasn't it? At that time, she tried to get to Holland. Yes, they turned her back. Ever since 1914, she'd been trying to get to Holland. Yes, I know. She had a daughter in Holland, she told Scotland Yard. That's why she was going back there, just to see her daughter. <laughs> you wouldn't expect them to swallow that one, would no, you? No, I wouldn't expect them to believe it. That's the trouble. They were too smart to believe the truth when they heard it. Eh? Even you don't always recognize truth, Harding. Huh? Well, you try me once. But say, Inspector, how about that story? All right. Mother Harry was on a Dutch ship bound from Lisbon to Rotterdam via Southampton. The French Second Bureau signaled the news to London and asked the British authorities to pick her up and return her to France. Why to France? Well, all her activities have been against France. Up to then, she had never worked against England. Well, there's no record that she ever worked especially against England. No? Well, anyway, here's the story as I got it from George Drake, who is detective inspector on the special branch. Just picture the scene as it opened in the office of Sir Basil Thompson at New Scotland Yard. Three o'clock in the afternoon. This is the woman, sir. Oh, yes. Bring her in, Drake. Uh, uh take this chair, please. Thank you, monsieur. You are the woman known as Matahari? That is correct, monsieur. I have reliable information that you are a spy in the employ of the third section of the German general staff. So? And from what source does monsieur obtain this information? Madame, you are not here to ask questions, but to answer them. I'm waiting for your answer. But I have no answer to give you. Indeed. Is it not true that last winter you were a dancer at the Folie Bourgère in uh, Paris? That is. Quite true. And was it not commonly known in Paris that you were a spy in the pay of the German government? <laughs> oh, but, monsieur, surely you understand that. It, it is what you call the publicity. Many people come to the theater to see this mysterious Matahari, who is supposed to be a spy. It is good for the box office, yes? 
You deny that you ever worked as a spy? Monsieur, there is nothing to deny. And you forget something, I think. What do you mean? As you say, I am the one to answer the questions. And I will tell you. If I was a spy in France, by what right do you, an English police officer, accuse me? This is not France. You are right. I make no accusation. Ah, that is better, monsieur. Why do you wish to go to Holland? But that is my country. My home is there. You have no other reason? No special business? It is to see my daughter who is there. Or more likely to carry information to German agents? Oh, no, monsieur. It is the truth. For three years I have not seen my little one. Four times now I have tried to leave France for Holland. Three times they stopped me, and now oh, I am so near. You will not stop me, surely, monsieur. I'm sorry, Mata Hari, but I have instructions to return you to Paris for examination. To Paris? For me, that means death. And yet, if I cannot go to Holland, oh, then let my child come to see me here in London just for one moment, then I will go. Oh, monsieur, just for one little moment. Surely, surely there is no harm in that. No, I, I'm sorry. It can't be done. I've got to send you back. Uh, oh, Drake. Yes, sir. Turn this lady over to the matron, then come back. One moment, please. Monsieur Commissioner, you will not do what I ask? I have already told you that is impossible. Then I tell you that it will be very bad for your country if you do this thing. What do you mean? That is all I have to say. All right, Drake. Yes, sir. Any orders, sir? Sit down a minute, Drake. What do you think of that woman? Well, sir, some on. I have an idea she's telling the truth about wanting to see her daughter. That may be. But unfortunately, she's a very clever spy. And anyhow, there's no choice. The orders are imperative to return her to France. Seems a pity, sir. I suppose they'll court martial her when she gets to Paris. Oh, I don't think so. Most likely they'll let her run for a bit. You see, there's a whole network of spies. They might get a line on the system. I see, sir. What boat will they put her on? Let's see. This is Friday. Send her down to Folkestone for Monday's boat. Very good, sir. We'll hold her in Pentonville Prison till then. No, eh? no, no, no. I don't mean that. I want her to run loose for a couple of days. There's still a few enemy agents in London. She might give us a lead. Put two of your best men on. See that they don't lose her. Very good, sir. Madame, uh, would like a table? Oui, if you please. Is France still here? Yes, madame. I would like him to wait on me. Certainly, madame. Madame will be seated. Thank you. Ah, you will attend to the lady. Oui, monsieur. Hello, France. Ah, uh, enchanté, madame. Uh, you will uh, take something? Just, uh, just some biscuits and a half bottle of Paul Roger. And not too cold. Certainly, madame. At once. One moment. France. Yes? You know me, France? Of course. Be careful. There are two policemen. Don't look. They are by the door. Keep smiling, France, and set the table. Yes. Already I have seen them. Good. Where is Herr Brandt? Tomorrow he arrives. On the Monday he returned to Holland. So, listen carefully, France. Yes, madame. After I finish this wine, bring quickly the bill. When I leave, clear the table quickly. Under this serviette, you will find a handkerchief. You must take it without being seen. Give it to Herr Brandt. Is it understood? Perfectly, madame. Under the message. Say to Herr Brandt, H24 sends a souvenir from England. Ah, a souvenir from England. Uh, yes, madame. I shall remember. Then, uh, then bring the wine. Quickly, France. Uh, at once, madame. Come in. Oh, hello, Drake. Hmm. You look as though you'd seen a ghost. What's wrong? Didn't you hear the news, sir? 
What news? A British battleship, the Conqueror, sunk in the channel by the German submarine U-69. Heavy loss of life. But she was... she was in a heavily main channel. How did that sub-commander find the passage? And how did he know there was anything to go in there for? He could never have got into a protected channel without inside information. Now I wonder. That woman, Matahari. Do you think she fooled us after all? It's impossible, sir. We never lost touch with her. Even the chambermaid at the hotel was one of our people. There was only that time in the restaurant when she spoke to the waiter. Barnes and Spellman watched her. They swear she couldn't have passed anything. Mm. Of course, it might not have been Matahari. But I have an idea it was. She's a marvellous worker. If so, it's the first time she ever worked against us. Maybe it was that that was what she meant when she gave us that warning. Perhaps. Well, it's all in the game. And that, Harding, is the story of Matter Hardy's handkerchief. Why, you, you mean that it was really her work in No doubt about it. After the war, we got the whole story. That handkerchief had a map of the protected channel in invisible ink. Also, information that a lone battleship would be moving from Sheerness to Plymouth. The rest was easy. And this man, Brandt, was a German spy. The man who got the handkerchief, yes. He was also working for the British government, playing both ends. We suspected it for a long time before we were certain. And then? Well, then one day he disappeared. I see. And Matahari never got to see her daughter. No. Eh? A few months after that, she was condemned to death and executed by the French government. Just on general principles, I oh, suppose. No. Eh? no, they finally got definite proof of some of her spy activities. How did that happen? Very curious combination of affairs. Back in France, she made a deal with the French authorities. She was to be allowed, finally, to go to Holland if she'd give information against Germany. But the deal didn't go through? Part of it. Matahari kept her end of the bargain, gave away a whole list of German spies. But it didn't do her any good, no. eh? No. When the German intelligence people heard about it, they gave Matahari away in a wireless message. That was the first definite evidence the French had got on Matahari. And it was on that evidence they condemned her. And then came the dramatic finish. Oh, I've got all that part. Uh. Oh. Matahari disrobing before the firing party and so on. Oh, no. Better leave that part out, Harding. Why, but, but that's great stuff. What's wrong with it? Just that it never happened. Gee. <laughs> well, there I go again. Well, thanks, Inspector. And next time you go fishing, <laughs> you might give me a break. Maybe. You have heard episode 33 in Blair of the Mounties. Our next story in this series is entitled The Ibex Mystery. <laughs>